bit at the two of them. Yet even as they do, there's a small pang of envy there. I can empathize with Eileen keeping her group of friends small, but I do wish I were closer to her, in more ways than one. She's who I wish I could be. The familiar sound of a motorbike horn can be faintly heard from outside, bringing an end to both my thoughts and this little outing. That for you? Giving a nod, I get up from my chair and collect my coat from Eileen's helpful hand, quickly throwing it over myself. Thanks for tonight, it was nice. Not wanting to keep Rose waiting, I wave Wallace goodbye as I take my leave, with Eileen coming along to see me out of the door. Got everything with you? I quickly pat around my pockets to make sure. <clears throat> Phone, purse, keys, they all seem to be there. All good. I'll see you then. If you want to come around, feel free. If I'm not too much trouble, that'd be nice. I do a poor job of, find, of hiding my happiness at the offer. My reply just a little too quick to sound natural. Believe me, you're no trouble. It honestly does me good to see you a bit more upbeat. I tilt my head a little at the odd idea. You just seemed kind of skittish before, but now you're all sunshine and rainbows. It suits you. Ah, sorry. I'm a bit shy. Not to mention a bit homesick. Being able to talk with friends outside of school was a nice change, not to mention having a homemade meal. Even if I didn't help that much, it did take my mind off things. Eventually, as my mind slowly manages to get back into gear, I muster the words to say what I want to tell her as I get past being so flustered. If you don't mind me being around for dinner, maybe being together in a club wouldn't be so bad? She hesitates for a good few minutes, making me doubt myself as I offer this suggestion as carefully as possible. She knows I like her as a person, so hopefully she can look past her previous experiences. But, just as I begin to think I've overstepped the mark, she gives an almost comically long sigh. The horn sounds again in the distance as silence reigns, but my feet stay plastered as she comes to an answer. Fine. Tell Caprice she can have her dumb club. Thank you. Just don't make me regret it. With an enthusiastic nod and a wave, I stare off down the hallway once more, Eileen disappearing into her apartment as I look back. Even as I walk down the hallway, my steps somehow feel lighter than they did as I entered. Being around others usually makes me exhausted, but right now, I feel more comfortable than ever. This fucking transition, I swear to God. Hey, welcome to Subway! Paula, is it nice to see you again? How's it going? I'm not joining this club thing, if that's what you're thinking. But... Word on the street was that pizza was involved. Besides, I don't think I can deal with the both of you without some backup. I'm not that much trouble, am I? Remind me who persuaded me into agreeing to this again. She's got a point. We... We... God damn it. Options. Music. Where is the music? Music? No. Here. I notice Eileen eyeing Wallace's beer in an unsubtle manner, the large glass perspiring away like in a commercial. I'd taken his apparent age as just his beard making him look older, but I guess he really does have a few years on us. Man, I miss beer. It'd go so well with this. Here, I was thinking you were far too uptight to do something like underage drinking. Remember the trip to Europe me and my family took last year? You think I just drank soda over there? Well... I was in Munich, Wallace. I mean, really. Caprice and I only smile at her little lecture. Don't be sad, Eileen. It's only a couple more years. Then you can drink all you want. The look of pure and unrelenting disdain Eileen gives her at being reminded of the weight goes gleefully ignored, which is probably for the best. Our chatter is interrupted by the arrival of a waiter, a weedy young man clad in a plain red and black uniform. It's impressive how well he maneuvers all our pizzas and sides onto the table, all our mouths watering as they steam away. With a curt, please enjoy, he leaves us to our feast. Damn, they're fast here. Best pizza in the city. How many have you actually tried? Doesn't matter, since I've already tried this place. She says, busily shoving a slice of pizza into her mouth. Eileen starts on hers, but mine catches the eye of Wallace. Also, did you hear that crashing in the background? <laughs> did some, someone, someone just broke a fucking dish? Vegetarian? You're not a leaf eater, are you? He says this with genuine concern in his voice. I just like the taste. 
The answer satisfies him as he goes to work on his own. The fact it's a meat lover's pizza is less than surprising. Dude, literally me with like gluten-free or like vegan advertised stuff, like Nagoya like wonton wrappers are usually made to be vegan or like like gluten-free this or that. I always get that shit. I'm not gluten sensitive, right? But like, it's there. It's always advertised at like grocery stores. Like, whoa, gluten free, organic. And I'm like, totally. Anyway, I think you can take the wallet hit for tonight. No problem. Yeah, no problem. It's a little sad how obviously she's trying to convince herself of the fact. The only reason I'm not having a quick check myself is because I budgeted the trip days in advance, and even Wallace looks like he's doubting himself a little. Such is life. Such is life of a struggling college student. Ha, <laughs> just wait till you get to be a post-college student. It doesn't get better. In fact, it gets worse. A lot I raise my glass, I realize that a familiar feeling is no longer weighing me down. For the first time in a long while, I don't feel the unease of loneliness. In the end, maybe that's enough for me to toast this new club and the friends in it. To our new art club! Prost! Which is German for toast, by the way, or cheers. Prost! I'm guessing they picked that up from Eileen, since she said she went to Munich, and that's in German. Act 2, motherfucker! <laughs> An achievement unlocked, of course. Why not? Oh, booga booga booga. Ooh, what is this noise? Ooh, this is so loud. <laughs> and like the transitions in this game are merciless. All right, everyone out. Caprice and I step out into the busy sidewalk per Eileen's orders, the chatty girl leaning through the passenger door as Eileen tries to get the car going again, giving a long stretch to help my stiff back. I do my best to keep out of the way. After news of Eileen's owning a car leaked out, Caprice's mind immediately set about organizing the art club's first outing. Inspiration for her art, she called it, but it was obviously an excuse for hanging out. Let's see. With things having gone this awry, I feel a little bad for going along with the idea despite Eileen's reluctance. Their investigation's apparently coming to nothing. Caprice writes herself as the car falls silent. Eileen closes the door behind her with some force before plodding around to us, frustration written all over her face. Looks like the engine won't idle at all. Serves me right for buying second hand. Know why it's not working? No idea. She looks a little sheepish for not having the answer on hand, but I can't say I blame her. Ah, but does she have the answer on second hand? <laughs> As the two of us mull over our options, we become distracted by Caprice and her wide grin. She has a plan cooked up already, for better or for worse. What are you smiling about now? I've got this. Just stay right here. i got to make a call. Caprice is dream waifu, honestly. Like, like I just want that M... Hold on, let me... What's the acronym again? I want that MPDG. That does not come naturally off the tongue. Fuck that. Maybe we gotta come up with a new, like, trope. Because Manic Pixie Dream Girl does not acronym very well into itself. Eileen and I grimace at each other in unison, but Caprice bounces off down the street before either of us can object. Getting the phone from her pocket as she walks, she flits between the people around her while unbothered by the ice on the sidewalk. She just skates across it, dude, because she's just... She's just OP. She's just overpowered. She's, she's Manic Pixie overpowered, girl. The background hum of people chatting and cars passing by takes over once again as we find ourselves at loose ends. Not like we could go anywhere, anywhere else, anyway, anywhere else, anyway, anywhere. You're not going to try and stop her? Think she'd listen to me if I tried? That's a fair point. Both of them are rather stubborn, so I suppose it's inevitable they'd clash sometimes. What's with the bags under her eyes? Honestly, I'm gonna be honest. This is, this is probably gonna sound a little weird. With the bags under her eyes, and like the fact that she's got big badonka donks, she kind of looks like she just gave birth, like, all the time. You know what I mean, bro. On the bright side, of all the places to break down, here isn't so bad. The weather's not too chilly, and it's nice to observe people sometimes, especially when they're bundled up in cute winter outfits. Some city workers in the distance are already beginning to set up the downtown Christmas tree. Um. Um. Oh no. Uh. 
<sighs> Providing some entertainment for the people walking as they struggle with the unyielding thing. Things will change as last-minute Christmas shoppers and sale hunters start rushing around, but right now, it's a pleasant atmosphere. Turning back to Eileen, she doesn't seem as content to patiently pass the time people watching as I am. I'm gonna go grab a coffee. Want one? I'm fine. Probably having a bit too much of it lately. There's no such thing as too much. As I shake my head, Shadow the Hedgehog here simply shrugs and begins strolling down the road in the opposite direction to Caprice. Rather than dance around the crowd, people make way for Eileen as she moves, her gaze fixed and noticeably taller than most. With little to do now but watch the car, I huff into my gloved hands a couple of times to try and warm them. At least the aquarium should be warmer, if we ever manage to finish the trip there. Just as I'm about to settle in and watch the passing crowds, the phone in my pocket causes the snow to vibrate. Not sure who it could be, I quickly grab for it. Dad. Without a second thought, I swipe my finger on the screen to pick up the call. Dad, hi. Hey, sweetie, it's good to hear your voice again. How are things? Jesus fucking Christ. Your mother and I said to ask if things were going okay at home. Everything's good. Rose has been a big help with everything. That's vastly understanding things. Understating things. Hello. If it weren't for her, I don't know how I would have been caped. Not just for the constant ho housework and errands, but also for being away from everyone and everything I knew before. I might still have my ups and downs, but the last thing I want to do is stress them out over me. That's good to hear. Hopefully it'll take a bit of stress off a certain someone. Tell Rose hello for us, if you remember. Can do. How's everyone over there? Your brothers are a pain in the ass, like always, for one. Right on cue, one of them loudly complains in the background. As you can tell. How's Lucy? Same as always. She's sleeping in the other room. I hear my mother's voice again in the background. Ah, right. She knocked a mug off the counter the other day. Your mom gave her a good scolding. I think she's acting out without you around. Oh, on purpose? Oh, okay. I was like, wait, like that's usually like an accidental thing. Oh. I can't help but laugh imagining it. My mom exasperated with my cat. Oh, it's her cat! Oh, like the fucking phone keychain right there. Anyway, we're getting by. It ain't the same without you, though. In a whispered voice, he continues. It's hard to get a moment's peace around here. Make sure to give your mother a call sometime, okay? I'll call her, don't worry. Atta girl. Anything worrying you? On your mind? No, things are good. I realize my mistake the moment I answer, having spoken just a little too quickly to make it seem natural. My mind starts to replay embarrassing situations I've been in, the constant concerns and worries of living alone, the loneliness. Dad's calming voice cuts through, interrupting my spiraling thoughts. I'd better let you get back to your friends. I hope I'm not keeping you away. It's fine. I'm just happy to hear you again. We miss you, too. Christmas around here will be a lot warmer once you're back for the holidays. We're going to miss you at Nana's this year. I really can't wait to see all of you again. Found a mechanic right nearby. I feel a little sheepish for assuming the worst of her little mission. Capri seems to be very friendly with the woman, but it's hard to read much into that given Caprice's personality. Hi, I'm Millie. The two of us are roommates. Mechanic! Might be stretching things a bit far, but I should be able to help. And now, Millie, it's time for you to meet my art club. Introducing Eileen and Allison. All I can do is give a weak smile as Eileen snorts in weary disapproval. Like it or not, looks like we're a part of the misadventure for good. I could have sworn there was already an art club. Pfft, that one is garbage. Mine is the cool art club. So, that's what you've been so happy about lately. Shame on me for thinking you were ever jealous of my position in the writing club. Ooh, ooh boy, we have... This is a fucking, like, manga dream team right here. The artist and the writer. Is that what all of this is about? Caprice wanted to be on level with her friend? I guess it worked out well for us anyway. So, you're in charge of the writing club? The current leader's graduating at the end of the semester, so he's handing the reins to me. Seems I made a good impression on him. And the rest of the club doesn't get a say? That's how it works. I like to call it a stable line of succession. Speaking of which, I need to get back to the writing I was doing before I got that phone call. Your car had issues? Yeah, engine died without any warning. Managed to coast to the side of the road. Eileen doesn't seem exactly taken with the situation. Millie's explanation of her being a writer not explaining her ability to fix a car. We don't have much option but to put our faith in her at this point. I'm guessing Caprice gave you the briefing. Need me around to start the thing? Oh, oh, let me! 
Eileen narrows her eyes, but eventually sighs and chucks her keys at the girl. Caprice's momentary hesitation shows she expected that to work no more than I did. Just don't go for a drive or something. I assure you, you haven't seen me actually angry yet. The seriousness of her tone seems to penetrate a little, of course. <laughs> Penetration. Caprice being Caprice, it doesn't take long for her to bounce back. Now then, let's... Er, now then, let's fix this thing. Right, let's have a look. She gives us a confident smile before popping the hood, Caprice taking the job of her assistant. To Millie's credit, she looks like a natural as she quickly moves this and that around, about to peer inside. If you don't need us, we'll just go for a short walk, alright? Got it! There you go. Playing among us. Fucking loser. The meaning of we becomes clear as Eileen puts a hand around my shoulder to direct me, the two of us walking off beside each other and leaving the two to their work. It feels a little weird to have Eileen's armor on my back and holding my shoulder as we walk side by side. Even if it is to guide me, she takes a long while to go. You sure you're alright leaving them alone? Not at all. Not like I can do anything to actually help, though. All I can do is awkwardly laugh it off. I don't have the first clue on even day-to-day -day maintenance for a car after all, so maybe just staying out of the supposed mechanics away might be for the best. At least it broke the ice a bit, as I still feel a little unsure when I'm alone with her. Also, oh my god, why are visual novel, like, backgrounds so fucking pretty? Like, every visual- oh my god, oh, I wanna be here, I wanna live here, I wanna live on that bridge, dude. Call me the fucking troll bridge, dude, pay the toll. I can never seem to get a read on Eileen. Every time we talk, I end up getting caught in her pace even now. I'm not sure why she pulled me away to walk with her. Well, no, that's not quite true. She must have noticed me being depressed earlier, even if she isn't saying anything about it. Given how she also invited me over for dinner when I was hungry, it seems she really does care for me despite her stoic exterior. As she drops her emptied coffee cup into a bin as we pass, I realize it's going to be up to me to raise the subject. So, you saw me earlier, huh? You did look a bit bummed when you got off the phone. Didn't want to bring it up if you didn't, though. She left me no choice. I miss talking to my family after so long. Sorry for being so flustered. Nothing to be sorry for. It's only natural. So you're homesick, huh? Sometimes. How could you be homesick with this? Oh my god. I have Fernve looking at this dude. I don't have Heim Cronkite. <laughs> I don't got that House of Cronkite, dog. I got that fucking Fernve. Moving out for the first moving out for the first time's a big deal. You don't need to beat yourself up over feeling stressed. Thanks. I thought I was doing okay, but when I heard my dad's voice again, it reminded you of what you're away from. I gave a simple nod. She doesn't she doesn't seem to be speaking in an overly soft or caring tone, but she's listening carefully. I appreciate it really. She doesn't come off as patronizing. I can't imagine living alone. I have no idea how you do it. Hey man, you can get guests over at any point. The impromptu mechanic appears finished as well, writing herself and closing the hood after poking around inside. She absent-mindedly wipes the sweat off her forehead, leaving some grease on her face before realizing her error. Whoops. Well, it's fixed for now. Looks like the fuse went, nothing major. I've done what I can here, but it needs a proper fix back at a shop. This'll get you going, though. Eileen's impressed look is shared by me. Being so handy is a good trait to have, and she did come all the way out here just to help us. I'm impressed. Fixed cars before. I was about to recommend taking it to my dad's auto shop, actually. Your dad's shop is as good as any other. I'll sort something out this afternoon. This is where I'd shake your hand in thanks, but, you know. Millie gives a self-deprecating smile in response. Caprice passes her a handkerchief from her pocket, which Millie quickly uses to wipe her hands as best as she can. Hey, since they're already here... I'll let you all get on with your art club adventure. I have other things I need to do. Sorry. Have fun. With that, we give our farewells to Millie as she heads back towards her car. Her momentary churlish... Ch churlish? Is that a fucking Dramora from Oblivion? What is that? Her momentary churlish grin towards the deflated Caprice doesn't go unnoticed. Eileen sna- Oh, hello. <laughs> hello, achievement. Eileen snatches her keys back from the girl's hand, wasting no time in addressing the both of us. Now are we finally going to go to the aquarium? Yeah! 
She beams brightly, her smile proving infectious. Turning to me, Eileen's emerald eyes stare into my own, checking my reaction after the day's events. As rough as she might be, Eileen really does care about others. Let's go, Eileen. Let's go, Eileen. With this, she gives one of those few smiles she dares give. It feels like a reward to see them, and I find myself wanting to see them more and more and more. Wah, 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 what's with that face? <laughs> What's with that face? Nothing. Gonna commit or play with your phone all day. Alright, fucking Gen Xer. <sighs> oh, another one of these. <laughs> okay. Oh. This looks like a restroom. With the sun beginning to set, Eileen and I say our goodbyes to Caprice before heading out into the hallway. Calming Caprice down after she gets a bright idea feels like trying to stifle the shake at soda can after opening it. She might still be brimming with energy, but the two of us leave the art club's room utterly deflated. We should have just joined the normal art club. You know, the one which isn't led by a maniac. Manic pixie dream girl, not maniac pixie dream girl, you foot. <laughs> you foothole. I wish I could get the two of them to see eye to eye more often. Caprice did say she's doing all this for Eileen's sake as much as her own, and she's far too straightforward to be lying about that. It's difficult to push back on Eileen, though, given how prideful a person she is. I seem to attract strong-willed friends. She is. A lot. She means well, though. Yo, tell me how Bloons Tower Defense 6 is. I need to play that at some point, dude. That's, that, that's gonna be real nostalgic, dog. Well, maybe it's not so bad if you're around to keep her occupied. For what it's worth, I was actually thinking this might be a fun little adventure. I wanted to thank you for making all of this work out. She makes an exquisitely awkward face, caught between my thanking her and the idea of having to share her room with us and anyone else Caprice manages to rope in from now on. I just smile as we start down the quiet hallway, Eileen taking a look out the window. Her gaze lingers for just that little longer than usual bit, the snow once again having started falling outside. I can't blame her, given how pretty it looks. Damn. Gonna be shoveling snow again. What a pain. She really isn't the sentimental type. Did I say something wrong? I was just thinking, you don't seem to have a very romantic view of the world being an artist. Is there much good about winter? Being back with my family, all the pretty snow around, people in cute jackets and coats, holidays... I end up trailing off, Eileen hardly looking swayed as I count my favorite things about the season on my fingers. Holidays are the problem. Everywhere is starting to close up or shut down for the New Year's already. I want to keep practicing instead of loafing around, but the life drawing classes are over and all the student modeling offers have dried up. I've seen notices for those on the notice boards around campus, with students and others making a little cash on the side by modeling for artists. Those same notice boards have become much more bare over the last month. I feel sorry for her, given she takes her painting so seriously. I was so caught up in wanting to be back with my family that I didn't think how would it be for her, especially when she doesn't get along with hers. Huh. <laughs> Relatable. As we walk along the hallway, I realize this might present an opportunity, a chance for me to help Eileen and be a part of her painting, instead of simply watching her from afar. I'm not completely sure about this one, but my obvious scheming has already caught Eileen's eye. It'd be helpful, I mean... Maybe I could do it? At this, Eileen stops and turns to me. Should I not have suggested this? You just need me to stand around and be a model, right? There is not a lot to it. This would be a live modeling, you know? I don't want to give you the wrong idea. The reminder does make me hesitate. I know there's nothing sexual about it, but... <sighs> something sexual? So, should I just... Should I take my clothes off, then? Oh. Oh no. She's about to answer before pausing for a moment. Much as I might try to stifle my awkwardness, undressing in front of someone else is still weird. How am I not getting an achievement for this? Come on. Also, that has no nipple, so that's fine. Nipple is bad, right? That's that's what gets it bad. If it's a if it's a problem, you can grab a towel. I can make do. <laughs> More like a paper towel, am I right? Feeling more than a little sheepish, I glance around to be more sure of my surroundings. The blinds are shut as they were before, and the door's still locked, so I'm not sure what I expected. Maybe the silence is putting me off. Yeah, quite literally here, where's the music? 
the apartment being set f so far back the road, <coughs> unlike mine. Oof, oof, there's that rough rustling sound. Ooh, yeah, oh yeah, oh fuck, oh yeah. I want to say that I'm fine, but I can't quite get over the stumbling block of being bared in front of someone. Meeting halfway will have to do for now. As Eileen sets her previous painting on the kitchen counter, I pop into the bathroom. Sweet. Okay, this is fine. I was like, oh no, am I going to have to censor something? I'm incapable of doing that, so I would just skip the clip. Leave a comment down below, by the way, gamers, if uh, any of y'all want to be an editor for me. Uh, that'd be a lot of fun. My heart's practically in my mouth as I reappear in the room with a towel wrapped around me, precious little being covered as I take my place before her. Oh god, hold on. Hold on. The music's getting loud again. Fucking... Ooh, boy. Ooh, boy. Maybe... maybe there? Just kinda right there, okay. There we go. Let's go back. Fucking... Uh, have to hit the actual escape key. Good god. Should I stand like this, or... She looks at me for a few moments <laughs> in serious thought. It's a little interesting how quickly her demeanor changes to that of a painter carefully considering how best to use my body as an artistic prop. Try turning around so your back's towards me. My thoughts are in a haze, unable to let go of how exposed I am. All I can do is nod and dutifully do as she says. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Keep your head like that, and maybe let your arms hang down. Like... like this? Yeah, just stay like that. I give a nod, trying to relax as much as I can. That isn't saying much, though. There's no other sound in the room as she starts sketching me out, the pencil's sharp scratching filling the air. It's certainly an odd experience to think that somebody's looking at my body so analytically, taking in every detail, considering it, and copying it to a canvas. For Eileen's sake, I try to keep it as still as possible despite the butterflies in my stomach. Her pencil work apparently finished. The gentle sound of brush strokes starts as her painting begins in earnest. She's fast at her sketching. I suppose she'd have a good bit of practice at this. I can't see much at all with my head slightly down like this, but at least this position is easy to keep. Without anything in particular to focus my eyes on, I can't help but turn my thoughts inward. How do people do this without getting self-conscious? Nobody's ever looked at my naked body like this, carefully and I am having way too much fun with this. I'm having way too much fun with this. Carefully analyzing every curve and muscle, I wonder how I look to her right now. Am I gross? Hey, you're playing Marble It Up? Dude, we need to play Marble It Up sometime. I can already tell what that answer is going to be. Compared to Eileen, I probably look plain at best. Hey, I know it's not easy, but can you try not to tense up so much? I glance back at Eileen. Our eyes meet and I force myself to face forward again, resuming my pose. Sorry. It's okay. Not too much longer. Oh yeah, that's right, it's literally just her back. She's getting all, like, fucking, like, 1950s valley girl about this, but it's just her back. That's interesting. No, and I think that's what that is, is that says, a, you know, that's sort of an interesting, like, um, it says a lot about her character, right? Like, we're seeing just how self-conscious she really is. Her expression was so focused and analytical, I sometimes forget that serious artwork can take so much knowledge and logic as well as creativity. I really am just an art. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I'm sorry. That's a weird way to end that. Oh, God. That's good. If I remember that, this isn't so bad. Wait. Wait. She likes being objectified right now? What is happening? I'm, I'm lost. I'm lost. I'm lost. I have to admit, this must look a bit shabby compared to her home. She surely worked out that I'm not exactly well off from the area already, though. Compared to Eileen's apartment, ours is full with the artifacts of life. A couple stuffed animals, some movie posters and DVDs, around the place, an aging console next to the television, and various bits and bobs accumulated through the years litter the room. Eileen's eyes pass over it all, but she stays unusually subdued. Perhaps the reason isn't the room itself, but the person sitting across from her. So, this is where you live, huh? Sorry if it's a bit cold. The heating's having problems. You mean having problems as usual? There goes trying to put up a front. 
I know it doesn't look great from the outside, but we try to keep the place nice to live in. Fixing leaks, giving the place a lick of paint, patching holes, and all that. Get Allison a crash course in handiwork, too. It isn't much, but it's home. That's got to count for something, right? It does. You've done a good job on making this place homely. You never told me you were this good at science and math, Allison. No wonder it seems so easy for you. She gestures towards the trophy on the side table and certificate on the wall above it, being awards from competitions I won in high school. You never asked. Oh, don't fucking do that. <laughs> what? Seriously? Allison, come on. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We're challenging it in the story. Yay. I earn a playful clip over the head. Eileen snorting in amusement. She was good enough to get a science scholarship thanks to that brain of hers. Never having been great at knowing how to respond to praise, I just hang my head. It feels a little embarrassing to be complimented in front of Eileen. Makes sense. She's got me out of a jam a few times now. She's a handy person to have around. I feel myself flower into a blush at the words, sinking lower into my chair as my face feels hot. I'm surprised how nice it feels despite being so awkward. A smile spreads on my face as my legs sway beneath the table with unexpected energy. It feels different when it comes from Eileen. Thanks for the food, by the way. It's nothing. Nice to finally meet someone from Allison's side of the fence for a change, actually. I was starting to get worried that she didn't have any friends. I can only bring my hand to my face as Eileen raises an eyebrow in pointed interest. I do wish Rose wouldn't make such a big deal out of me being shy. Really? Not exactly the outgoing type, I guess. I'm shocked. She takes a large sip of the soda before her... before continuing on. Did I spit on my arm? Or is it raining through the ceiling in my house? No, it's I obviously spit on my arm. Sorry, back to the game here. You know, I will have to say this. I don't know. Maybe this is just... This, you, who cares? This, this is for the fellas watching, okay? I'm sure this must be uncomfortable for the ladies. Between Eileen and, and Rose, I'm, I'm going to have to go with Eileen. This is like, you know, kind of like, you know, gritty artist, you know, millennial... Gen Zer girl versus like, you know, really boomery like, crabby rough and tumble Gen Xer. Yeah, I already see it. I there's a few of us in a little circle now. Or <coughs> there's a few of us in a little circle now. No thanks to her dragging me into a club. Also, was that was, was sorry Ryan Ryan was that was that capital P prejudice was that capital P prejudice right there sir. Oh, learn to be more all-encompassing in your videos, sir. Capital P for penetration. You agreed to come. It's Caprice's club anyway. Oh, so now you have nothing to do with it. This is a new story. All I can do is grimace as Eileen lifts an eyebrow, getting the rise out of me that she wanted. She softens the blow a little with a small nudge from her shoulder, earning a smile from Rose. Eileen, here's a good example. Here's a good example. Honestly... This rose right here reminds me of the rose from Two and a Half Men, but obviously, like, you know, different figure, we'll say that. Eileen gives a mighty yawn, poorly hidden by a hand over her mouth. I don't think I've seen her bother trying to hide one before. Sorry. Tired? I'm always tired. She's literally always tired. She literally looks like she's always just given birth. Watch with the bags under your eyes anyway, rough night? Insomnia. It's fun stuff. <sighs> I gotta take some mel melatonin, right? Take some melanin. <laughs> melanin. <laughs> for her, I wanted to be a part of something that was important to Eileen. Even before then, I wonder if the times I tried to get closer weren't out of friendship alone. What I felt as I watched Eileen walk away was all the confirmation of my feelings I needed. A dark figure suddenly appears, taking no heed of my surprise as it leans against the balcony beside me. As I compose myself once more, the familiar acrid smell passing my nose tips me off before my eyes do. Don't scare me like that! Oh, whoa. Rose looks like a lot hotter in this art style. Oh my god, maybe I'm just fucking stupid, and uh, you know what? You know what, dude? I'm fucking stupid. Hold on, and take a... <laughs> Hey, I called out. Not my fault you were daydreaming. Her mention of it brings all my worries flooding right back. Hardly wanting to look at Rose while thinking about all this, I turn back and try to ignore her as best as I can. Rose mentioned how I should think about finding a partner sometime while in college. My parents, too, even my high school friends before I came. 
I was content to focus on school and keep such complications out of mind until my life was all set up and ready. College has already set me on that account. Life doesn't go on hold until you're ready to face it, unfortunately. Rose simply blows a puff of smoke, a thin stream passing her lips and disappearing into the night sky. I try to keep my mouth shut, but the smell proves too much for me as I bring my hand to my face. That's terrible. You're the one who banishes me here, remember? I hate to admit it, but she does have a point. Rose stubbornly makes a point of taking a puff of her cigarette, but soon notices that something is amiss. Come on, out with it. What's on your mind? It'd be easy enough to wave her off. One of the things I like about Rose is that she knows when to step back, and this is the kind of thing plenty of people keep private. But somehow, even if I haven't told Eileen how I felt, I kind of want someone else to know. I think I like someone. I watch her reaction with the best attempt I can muster at casual interest. I'm surprised by how unsurprised Rose is. After a torch torturously tortaruga la tortaruga long time, she finishes her puff of the cigarette and takes it from her mouth. You have the luck of someone with that on the mind. It's that Eileen girl, right? My mind blanks. She picked that up herself? She isn't taken off guard by my liking a girl at all? The knot of anxiety I hadn't even noticed forming inside of me suddenly twists and turns the expected spluttering explanation suddenly not needed. I psyched myself up so much only for it to go nowhere. The silence between us continues as Rose patiently waits for me to respond. It's just... What's supposed to come after saying that? I didn't think you knew. About Eileen, or... You know. Well, I mean... Kinda hard to ignore what's in front of your face, you know. Seeing you two together, it all clicked. You don't think I'm weird? Apparently feeling a little more sure of what to say, she gives a disarming smile. <laughs> Believe me, I'm not in any position to call someone weird. Yeah. Hey, that's not what you're supposed to say. She elbows me in response to my mostly unintentional bite back. With the situation diffused, I managed to calm down a little. Just saying I let. Oh my god, whoa. I just realized the background was like blurring out. Just saying I like her makes my thoughts feel all the more real, my heart skipping a beat as I repeat the words in my mind. Rose thinks to herself a little before snuffing out her cigarette on the ashtray and looking at me squarely. Sorry, I shouldn't be so flippant when you're all worked up. I get that coming out can be hard. For what it's worth, I really appreciate that you trust me so much. The warm smile on her face proves infectious, all tension from the air fading away. I hardly mind now that I've managed to unwind a little. I get the feeling she's stumbling through this herself. Minutes go by with only the passing of cars beneath us for the noise, both of us savoring the peacefulness of the winter's night. At loose ends, I lean against the balcony railing and finally break the silence. What should I do? I don't think that's something I can decide for you. Just remember that you're still young. So you don't think it'll work out? I'm not saying that. Just take it easy, alright? Relationships are a pain in the ass. <laughs> This isn't what I'd hoped Rose would say at all, but that doesn't mean she's wrong. I thought love was supposed to feel all happy and warm, but I feel more nervous than anything else. All right, Spider-Man. Okay, Spider-Man. All right, Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Well, on that note, we're going to end it here. I'm going to see you in part seven. Love ya. Hey, everybody. This is Ryan Sierra, your favorite chocolatey eclair. Thanks so much for checking out my amateur voice acting. Leave a like if you liked it. Leave a comment if you want to give feedback. Thanks so much.